హలో గైస్ దిస్ ఇస్ డాక్టర్ కె రవిరాజ్ యువర్ అనాటమీ ఫ్యాకల్టీ ఫ్రమ్ మ్యారో వెల్కమ్ యూ ఆల్ ఫర్ ది అనాటమీ క్వశ్చన్ డిస్కషన్స్ ఫ్రమ్ ది రీసెంట్ నీట్ పీజీ టూ థౌసండ్ ట్వంటీ త్రీ రిగార్డింగ్ అనాటమీ ఐఎమ్ సే ఆల్ ది అనాటమీ క్వశ్చన్స్ వేర్ వెరీ సింపుల్ వీ గాట్ ద క్వశ్చన్స్ ఫ్రమ్ ది అనాటమీ ప్యూర్ అనాటమీ అండ్ ఆల్సో ఫ్రమ్ ది ద రిలవెంట్ క్లినికల్ ఆస్పెక్ట్స్ ఆఫ్ ది అనాటమీ ఇఫ్ యూ నో ద బేసిక్ అనాటమీ అండ్ ఇట్స్ అప్లైడ్ easily you can answer all these questions almost 20 questions came from the anatomy and it's relevant the applied aspects now we see one by one now to begin with we're going to start the discussion from the embryology questions now which of the following structure is developed from the marked structure option a median umbilical ligament option b medial option c meckel's diverticulum and option d ligamentum teres now see the diagram now in this diagram the marking is on allantois very good the marking is on allantois i hope you know now this is our yolk sac and this is our foregut tube this is our midgut tube and this is our hindgut tube now allantois is a diverticulum from the hindgut tube okay now this allantois form uracus and this uracus forms median umbilical ligament now this uracus is extending from bladder the apex of the bladder specifically saying to the umbilicus okay so median umbilical fold which contain remnant of uracus which is extending from the apex of the bladder to the umbilicus we also have medial umbilical fold medial umbilical fold the remnants of umbilical arteries and lateral umbilical fold is a peritoneal fold covering over the inferior epigastric vessels okay right now next one sometimes the uracus remains patent the entire uracus remains patent so now we have a communication from the bladder to the umbilicus and this condition is called uracus fistula now in the uracus fistula yes the baby will be passing urine around the umbilicus so the question will be the newborn brought to the opd by her by his mother with the complaints of passing urine around the umbilicus and the answer is that is due to uracus fistula now we also have one more duct that is our vitellin duct now vitellin duct is connecting the midgut to the yolk sac and the vitellin duct will disappear for some babies the failure of vitellin duct to close it is termed as vitellin fistula now we have a communication between the gut tube to the umbilicus now in this case the baby will be passing meconium around the umbilicus that is due to vitellin fistula so now we have two cases urine around the umbilicus is due to uracus fistula meconium around the umbilicus due to vitellin fistula and this is the recent fmge question okay the meconium around the umbilicus is due to vitellin fistula sometimes the part of the vitellin duct not the entire tube the part of the duct remains patent and in turn forms meckel's diverticulum i hope you know that now see the question which of the following structure developed from the marked structure now marked structure is uracus which in turn forms median umbilical ligament that is the answer for this question now see the second question the defect in which of the following aortic arch causes the defect as shown in the image now in this image the image is showing pda i hope you know that now we have a communication between the arch of aorta to the pulmonary trunk so now the pda is due to the persistence of ductus arteriosus now ductus arteriosus is derived from now please remember aortic arches it is a very important question very often we are getting question from the aortic arches the exact question not exact question uh, from the aortic arches we got the question from 2022 November INACT we got the question last November INACT we got the question from INACT I am telling you repeatedly 
whenever you appear for any exam please go through the recent need inact fmge irrespective of your exams fmg student means you have to know the fmg paper need paper inact paper if you are appearing for inact inact need fmg paper recent papers you have to know ditto questions similar questions from the same area you will get the question if you recall the november 2022 november inact paper then easily you can answer these type of questions okay now again for the coming INICT and the FMG exam or 2024 exams, again you will get the question from the IOT Karchas. Very important topic, very easy topic, simple topic. Now what is the fate of the IOT Karchas? The first arch regress and forms maxillary artery. The second arch will regress and forms stapedial artery and the hyoid artery. Third arch forms common carotid, internal carotid and the external carotid. Now fourth arch artery, right fourth arch artery forms right subclavian. And the left to fourth arch artery forms arch of iota. Fifth arch will disappear. And the sixth arch artery, proximal part, forms pulmonary artery in both sides. And ductus arteriosus, the distal part of the left sixth arch artery, forms the ductus arteriosus. And that is the question we got. Now, one more applied. Another expected question for coming INACT is now this question. Now, in this diagram, we are seeing the abnormal right subclavian artery. Now, in the abnormal right subclavian artery, the right to fourth arch artery will disappear and the caudal part of dorsal aorta persist and form the abnormal right subclavian artery. The abnormal right subclavian artery go behind the esophagus and compress the esophagus and in turn cause dysphagia lusoria. So, dysphagia lusoria is due to which artery? Abnormal right subclavian artery. That is why abnormal right subclavian artery is also called as Lusorian artery. Another expected question for the coming INACT and FMG exam. FMG definitely will get the question. 2023 June FMG exam. Okay. Right. So now see the question. The defect in which of the following aortic arches causes a defect as shown in the image. So answer the ductus arteriosus that is coming from left to sixth. So, next time they may give you specifically left to sixth proximal distal. Likewise, they will confuse you with the right and left side. Right and left side. So, ductus arteriosus is coming from distal part of left sixth arch artery. They will confuse you with proximal part of left sixth right side sixth arch distal, right side proximal part distal. Likewise, they will confuse you. So, please be clear. The ductus arteriosus is coming from distal part of left sixth arch artery be specific distal this word is very important so when they ask you this question again in the future they expect it they add this word distal proximal they confuse you please be clear right now come to the next question now the next question is from your brain after sustaining the stab injury the particle got stuck in the lateral aspect of dorsal cord in the neck which of the following laws is most likely seen? Now, from the brain, neuroanatomy, for the NEET exam, I am saying, every year, they are giving only one question. If it is INACT, four questions you will get. FMGE, three to four questions will get, plus one or two questions will be in the applied. So, NEET exam, every year, usually, they are giving only one question. Last previous NEET exam, they gave the question about the anterior communicating artery and it was some compress. Our optic chiasma question. So, again this year, 2023, also we got only one question. Right. So, now the question is about the cord, the dorsal cord. Now, the question they gave specifically the lateral aspect of the dorsal cord. Now, see the question. Now, this is the dorsal cord and this is the dorsal cord. We have two structures, fasciculus gracilius and fasciculus cuneatus. Now, which is lateral, which is medial? Fasciculus gracilius is medial and fasciculus cuneatus is lateral. So, fasciculus cuneatus is the lateral structure. It is the structure affected. Now, fasciculus cuneatus carries. See here, fasciculus gracilius contains the fibers from sacral region, lumbar region and also from lower thoracic level, which means fasciculus gracilius carry the fibers from lower part of the body that is from the lower limb. Now, 
whereas vesicular cuneatus carry the fiber from upper thoracic and cervical level which means it is carrying the fiber from the upper limb so vesicular cuneatus upper limb fibers vesicular gracilis yes lower limb fibers and we know that the dorsal column carries what type of sensory modalities very good fine touch that itself a question fine touch is carried by dorsal column tract crude touch is carried by spinothalamic tract so fine touch proprioception vibration stereognosis position sense all these are sensory modalities carried by our dorsal column tract now we have a lesion in the neck region so dorsal column tract decussit in the medulla yes very good in the medulla only it will decussit so anything below the lesion any lesion below that the patient will have effect on which side same side okay above the medulla means the effect will be on the opposite side anything below the decussation the effect will be on the same side okay right so now see the question now we have the injury in the lateral aspect of the dorsal cord in the neck which means the patient will have effect in which side same side ipsilateral ipsilateral so option c and d are not correct ipsilateral side again i told you just now fasciculus cuneatus carry the fibers from upper limb fasciculus gracilis carry the fibers from lower limb so now what is the answer for this question proprioception loss in the ipsilateral arm that is the answer for this question very easy question we got okay right now see the next question the student had his jaw locked due to excessive yawning which of the following muscle attached to the articular disc of the temporomandibular joint option a masseter b lateral pterygoid c medial pterygoid and temporalis we know that all the muscles of mastication attached to the mandible now temporalis muscle attached to the coronoid process whereas our lateral pterygoid muscle attached to the head of the mandible neck of the mandible it is also attached to the articular disc and which is also blending with the capsule of the temporomandibular joint whereas masseter middle pterygoid muscle attached to the ramus of the mandible masseter attached to the outer surface of the ramus of mandible medial pterygoid attached to the inner surface of the ramus of the mandible okay right so now see this diagram now in this diagram we are seeing the lateral pterygoid muscle and the medial pterygoid muscle okay now lateral pterygoid muscle attached to the head neck and also the disc can you see this white structure here that is our articular disc and we are seeing the medial pterygoid attaching to the inner surface of the ramus of mandible so now what is the answer for this question so muscle attached to the articular disc answer is b lateral pterygoid and that is the answer for this question okay right now see the next question the patient presented with swelling and pain in the area as shown in the figure which nerve is responsible for carrying the fibers from the affected area now the patient have loss of sensation that is pain and swelling in this area now who will carry the sensory fibers from this area now see the diagram the face sensory supply is mainly by the entire face sensory supply is by trigeminal nerve by its three divisions ophthalmic maxillary mandible except the skin over the angle of mandible the skin over the angle of mandible it is supplied by our great auricular nerve this is a direct question they gave in very old aims exam 2016 may aims exam we got this question skin over the angle of mandible is supplied by great auricular nerve now this question they keep on asking this question the base is only one thing angle of mandible supplied by great auricular nerve but we are getting this question in a different way in 2018 neat exam see this question this is the image of a patient with leprosy they ask you to identify the marked nerve in the given diagram now in this diagram the nerve is going to the auricle so what is the answer this is our great auricular nerve the other options were transverse cervical this nerve is not transverse in the neck this nerve is not going to clavicle so it is not transverse cervical it is not supraclavicular it is going to the auricle this is a great auricular nerve 
in 2019 aims exam we got the question loss of sensation in the shaving area this is a question we got in 2019 exam after parotid surgery loss of sensation in the shaving area shaving area means they are mentioning about this area and that area sensory supply again skin over the angle of mandible and the adjoining area it is applied by our great auricular nerve so the point is again and again we are getting question from this area so this is the area this is a high yield area okay now in the future also you may get the similar questions so now what is the answer for this question so the skin over the angle of mandible sensory fibers are carried by our great auricular nerve so any pain so any swelling in that area which is responsible for carrying the pain our great auricular nerve okay right now see the question in the given endoscopic image of nasopharynx which of the following is indicated by the marked arrow again it's very simple question now they gave nasopharynx so now in the nasopharynx now we know that in the roof or posterior wall we got the the lymphatic aggregations and that is our adenoids i hope you know that now in the lateral wall we are seeing one tube opening there that is our east asian tube opening the pharyngeal opening of the east asian tube now above and behind we see one small swelling and that swelling is called tubal elevation and from the tubal elevation we are seeing one fold there now this fold is a and this fold is b now that fold is coming from the east asian tube a is going to from the tube opening to the palate that is the salpingo palatine fold a is salpingo palatine fold and b is from the tube opening to the pharynx that is the salpingo pharyngeal fold now very important thing is now behind the tubal elevation and we see one space there now this space is called pharyngeal recess which is also called fossa of rosenmuller the same thing we are seeing in the yes scope image now this is our east asian tube opening okay and above that we see a swelling that is the tubal elevation and we are seeing the peritoneal fold this is salpingo pharyngeal fold and behind that we are seeing this fossa so this is our fossa of rosenmuller so fossa of rosenmuller that is the the carcinoma of nasopharynx is most commonly seen in fossa of rosenmuller okay so now what is the answer for this question now answer for this question is yes the marked area is our fossa of rosenmuller okay now see the next question a child has tonsillitis and pain referred to ear which of the following nerve is responsible for it now again the same question was asked in the recent fmg exam okay so now what is the answer for this question now for this yes you have to see this diagram now this is the image of a tonsil yes now this is the medial surface of the tonsil the medial surface of the tonsil we see numerous crypt i hope you know that now in the later surface of the tonsil we have a capsule just the lateral to the capsule we have a space now that is our peritonsillar space now the peritonsillar space infection in the peritonsillar space yes that is our quincy i hope you know that now peritonsillar space contains paratonsillar vein now paratonsillar vein that is the most common source of hemorrhage after the tonsillectomy procedure and that is the question we got in the recent inact exam 2021 inact exam we got this question the paratonsillar vein is a most common source of hemorrhage after the tonsillectomy procedure 2021 inact question now tonsil is lying in one muscle the bed of tonsil is formed by which muscle our superior constrictor muscle now later to the superior constrictor muscle we have a nerve that is our glossopharyngeal nerve so glossopharyngeal nerve damage during tonsillectomy procedures 
then the pain will be referred to middle ear. Why? Because of the tympanic branch of glossopharyngeal nerve supply the middle ear. Okay? And that is the answer for this question. So, glossopharyngeal nerve damage during transurative procedure means the patient have a referred pain to the middle ear. I told you already, the same question was given in the FMG exam. So, now tonsillitis and pain is referred to ear and the answer is the tympanic branch of our ninth nerve and that is the answer for this question. Okay. Right. Now, see the next question. The patient presents with swelling under the left earlobe and complaints of swell, complaints of pain. Which of the following structure is the cause of the pain? Investing layer of deep cervical fascia, facial nerve, auriculotemporal nerve and the great auricular nerve. Right. Now, see the question. Now, the patient is having the swelling, yes, in the parotid region. Swelling under the left ear lobe and complaints of pain. So, complaints of beginning the left ear lobe means the swelling in the parotid region. So, the parotid swellings are extremely painful. Why? Because of two reasons. See, the parotid capsule, see here, the parotid gland is enclosed within the unyielding parotid capsule, there from the investing layer deep cervical fascia. The acute inflammation of parotid gland may cause the pain in the periodical region as a result of stretching of this capsule and the stimulation of great auricular nerve. The pain in the parotid swelling is mainly due to the unyielding nature of this capsule. So, what is the best answer? We have two answers. Number one, the investing layer of deep cervical fascia greater than great auricular nerve. Okay. So, the pain in the parotid region, it is due to the unyielding nature of investing layer of deep cervical fascia. This is also right. And great auricular nerve, this is also right. So, both A and D are the correct answers. Now, out of these two, the best answer is A greater than D. That is the best answer. Investing layer of deep cervical fascia, that is the best answer. Okay. Right. Now, see the next question. Now, the next question is from the upper limb. So, in the upper limb, they gave the question, the man has a numbness on the volar aspect of the radial three and a half fingers, which get relieved when he hangs down from the bed. Which side and test most likely the answer? Now, the point is, volar means palmar. So, palmar aspect of the lateral three and a half fingers. See here, the, this is the palmar side. Now, the lateral three and a half fingers, in the palmar side, it is applied by our median nerve. So, patient have median nerve injury. That is the point, first point. Lateral aspect of the three and a half fingers in the palmar side is applied by median nerve. Okay. And what about the ulnar nerve? Ulnar nerve supplies medial one and a half digits. Now, ulnar nerve damage means they give clue Guyon's canal. So, Guyon's canal transmit the ulnar nerve and the ulnar vessel. Okay, right. Now, the question is about the lateral three and a half fingers. Loss of sensory supply, numbness. So, now, if it is ulnar nerve damage, yes, then they gave clue medial one and a half. That means ulnar nerve. Okay. Now, in Guyon's canal, I told you just now, in Guyon's canal, you see the ulnar nerve injury. Guyon's canal damage. So, option C and D are wrong. So, now we have option A and B. Why? Because median nerve compression in below the flexor retinaculum, median nerve enters the palm by passing below the flexor retinaculum and then gives sensory supply and also give the motor supply recurrent branch. Median nerve in the palm supplies loaf muscle. I hope you know that. L-O-A-F. Lumbricals 1 and 2, opponents pollicis, abductor pollicis brevis and the flexor pollicis brevis. So, now option A and B are right. Carpetal syndrome. Now, what is the test we have to do? Now, Froman test, I think you know that. Froman test, it is a test we do for which muscle? Adductor pollicis muscle. Very good. Adductor pollicis muscle, it is not the thenar eminence muscle. Adductor pollicis muscle is applied by ulnar nerve. So, Froman test, it is a test to check the ulnar nerve. 
to check which muscle erector pollicis muscle and that is a question we got in 2022 neat exam okay right so now option b is not right so option a is the right answer now see this diagram now this is the carpal tunnel syndrome carpal tunnel syndrome means compression of median nerve while passing through the carpal tunnel okay now what are the test we can do sir we can do the durkheim test we can also do phalanx test and we also get one sign tinel sign so now what is the durkheim test now we have to give the pressure on the carpal tunnel to produce the symptoms that is the yes durkheim test now what is the phalanx test the patient flexes both wrist with a dorsal surface touching to produce the symptoms that is a phalanx test so carpal tunnel syndrome please remember durkheim test and the phalanx test and one sign tinel sign okay right so now is a very simple question and what is the answer for this option a is the answer for this question now the same question can be given next year with loss of numbness in the medial one and a half fingers so in that case option a and b are wrong so c and d lesion is in the ulnar nerve ulnar nerve is passing through gyan's canal and what is the test we do for ulnar nerve very good d is the answer in the case of medial one and a half fingers numbness in the volar aspect so now the question is about the median nerve lateral three and a half digits in the palmar side answer is option a carpal tunnel syndrome under arkans test or phalanx test or tinel sign anything can be given in the future right now see the next question the patient comes with abdominal pain jaundice and portal hypertension the anastomosis is between which of the following veins option a left colic vein and middle colic vein option b superior rectal vein and phrenic vein c esophageal vein and left gastric vein d sigmoid and the superior rectal vein now we are asking about the portal hypertension that means we have to know about the portal caval anastomosis main areas that remember for the portal caval anastomosis number 1 the lower end of esophagus with the left gastric vein and the esophageal vein draining into esophagus system of veins in the lower part of the rectum the superior and the middle rectal vein anastomosing with inferior rectal vein now para umbilical region para umbilical veins anastomosing with superior superficial epigastric vein and retro peritoneal veins draining the colon and the veins of the posterior abdominal wall these are the main areas you have to remember for sites for portal caval anastomosis very simple question and you know the answer so left colic vein middle colic vein ah no superior rectal vein and phrenic vein again no superior and sub sigmoid and superior rectal vein again no answer is the esophageal veins draining into asaiga system of veins and the left gastric vein that is the answer for this question now see the next question the defect in which of the following structure forms the following again the same question was asked in 2019 fmg exam they get theory question instead of giving the image based question they give direct theory question so now the marked structure is our deep ring deep inguinal ring so deep ring is a defect in see diagram now deep ring is the defect in transversalis fascia the deep ring act as the inlet now where is the deep ring deep ring is situated 1.25 cm above the mid inguinal point now which is acting as a outlet for the inguinal canal the superficial inguinal ring which act as the outlet of the inguinal canal which is a defect in external oblique aponeurosis now where is the superficial ring very important point the superficial inguinal ring is above and medial to pubic tubercle this is very important why sir because we have another opening called the femoral ring femoral ring is situated below and lateral to pubic tubercle another expected question for the coming fmg exam inact exam they give some clinical scenario or in the future neat exam or the next exam they will give you this question the patient come to you with a swelling in the loin groin region now the pay the swelling on examination the surgeon find out that the swelling is present above and medial to pubic tubercle 
Now, what is the diagnosis? Above and middle to pubic tubercle means that is inguinal hernia. Below and lateral to pubic tubercle, the swelling, that means that is a femoral hernia. So, this is very important clinical clue. In the future, you may get the question. Okay? Right. So, now see the next diagram. Right. Now, in this diagram, we are seeing this one. That is our conjoint tendon. Now, the conjoint tendon is formed by internal oblique muscle and transverse abdominus muscle. This itself a question, expected question. And we know already conjoint tendon give strength to which wall? Posterior wall in the medial aspect. Posterior wall in the medial aspect. Yes, the inguinal canal is strengthened in the posterior wall by the middle aspect by the conjoint tendon, internal oblique and transabdominus. Okay? Right. Now, this conjoint tendon passing in front of the Hasselbach's triangle. Now, we know already our indirect inguinal hernia will be occurring through inguinal canal. Whereas, the direct inguinal hernia, which is direct inguinal hernia occurring through Hasselbach's triangle, I told you, in front of the Hasselbach's triangle, we are seeing this tendon, conjoint tendon. So, weakness of conjoint tendon, which in turn push the contents and they herniate through this opening. So, conjoint tendon weakness means, then the patient will have direct hernia. Again, the question we got in the NEAT exam. So, now, see this question. The defect in which of the following structure forms the following? So, marked structure is our deep ring. Deep ring is a defect in? Fascia transversalis. Option A is the answer for this question. Okay. Right. I told you, we got another question. Which of the following weakness can cause hernia medial to inferior epigastric artery and above the pubic tubercle? The clue is, they didn't give direct indirect inguinal hernia. They gave the clue, the hernia is medial to inferior epigastric artery. Now, which hernia is medial to inferior epigastric artery? Very good. Our direct inguinal hernia. Direct hernia is medial to inferior epigastric artery. So, now weakness of which structure? Our conjoint tendon. And that is the answer for this question. Clear? Right. Now, come to the one last question. Now, injury at which of the following market region causes failure of dorsiflexion? So, X-ray image is given and different points of femur, tibia and fibula are marked. Now, see the diagram. Now, A is the pointing towards femur, D is over tibia and B and C are pointing towards fibula. Now, B is, it is pointing towards the head of fibula and C is at the neck of fibula. Now, we have one nerve which is winding around the neck of fibula. That is the question we got 2022 November INACET. I told you, direct repeat questions will come. No? The same questions we got. So, common peroneal nerve is winding around the neck of fibula and which in turn divided into superficial peroneal nerve and the deep peroneal nerve. And we also have another nerve, tibial nerve. Tibial nerve which is a nerve of posterior compartment of leg. Whereas, deep peroneal nerve, it is a nerve of anterior compartment of leg. Superficial peroneal nerve, it is a nerve of lateral compartment of leg. We also have artery. What is the artery for anterior compartment of leg? Anterior tibial artery. What is the artery for posterior compartment of leg? Posterior tibial artery. What is the artery for lateral compartment of leg? Peroneal artery, branch of posterior tibial artery. Very good. Now, anterior compartment of leg muscles, what they do? They bend the ankle joint in the front side. They do dorsiflexion. Now, what is the action of posterior compartment of leg muscles? Posterior compartment of leg muscles, they do, they cross the ankle joint on the back side. They do plantar flexion. So, now, in this case, they gave clue, the patient is not able to dorsiflex. So, which nerve is affected? Deep peroneal nerve is affected. 
If it is not given, then we have to go for common peroneal nerve. So now the common peroneal nerve, which is winding around the neck of fibula and in turn dividing into deep peroneal nerve and the superficial peroneal nerve. So what is the answer for this question? C is the answer for this question. Loss of dorsiflexion. Okay. Right. So now what is the answer for this question? So loss of dorsiflexion means deep peroneal nerve is there. Now the answer is C is the answer for this question. Now instead of giving failure dorsiflexion, the patient have deformity. What is that? Foot drop. Foot drop is due to that is a question we got in the NEET exam only. 2019 NEET exam they gave. Foot drop. The patient is having deformity. Foot drop. Foot drop is due to. They, that is a theory question they gave. Not image based question. Theory question. Foot drop is due to. Instead of giving loss of dorsiflexion, they gave foot drop. The patient is having the deformity. Foot drop. That is due to which nerve injury? Again, deep peroneal nerve is the correct answer. If it is not given, then we have to go for common peroneal nerve. So, again and again, the NEET and INSCT exams, they are giving questions from the same high yield area. If you know these score areas, easily you can score the, the anatomy questions. I don't know about, I don't know about the other subjects. The anatomy, if you be strong, if you know the basics in the anatomy and the relevant applied, easily you can answer the anatomy questions. These are the questions we got from the anatomy. Still more, some more questions are there. And they gave a question about one neck swelling that move with uh, protrusion of tongue. And that is our thyroglossal duct question. And they gave a question about histology of glomerulus. Usually we, would, we don't teach the histology of kidney. And again, in path uh, pathology, madam, we'll discuss about the glomerulus histology. Again, they will be they, teaching about the uh, kidney pathology, you know. So they are familiar with the glomerulus image. We got that question. So, so many relevant questions are there. Almost I am saying, uh, another question came from the uh, the epidural hemorrhage and subdural hemorrhage. The non contrasted image was given. So, so many questions are there. So, yes, those questions will be dealt in the corresponding subjects. These are the core anatomy questions and the relevant applied questions. So, again and again saying, so know the basics. If you know the basic anatomy and the relevant applied, yes, even for the next, even for the next exam, I am saying, easily you can score. Yes, so many questions. Easily you can answer more questions. Okay. So, that's all guys. I hope you enjoyed this session. So, that's all. Thank you so much. And see you in the next session.